Matt Sperling. I'm the Editor-in-Chief of Semiconductor Engineering. I'm over at Brewer Science with B.J. Kayasta, who's going to talk today about manufacturing of printed sensors. B.J., when we think about a printed sensor, we tend to think of them all as the same, but there's a lot of differences there, and a lot of that comes from how they're manufactured, right? So depending on how, so, so how much we would like to make, so there are different ways of manufacturing those sensors. What's the criteria there? Is it cost? Is it, is it quality? What's the difference in one versus another? Now this, this is uh, j just the, the manufacturing scale in, in terms of, uh, and there are differences in terms of the materials uh, properties, so different kind of processes, manufacturing process, they need different kind of uh, ink properties. Uh, that will be different, but, but in overall, finally, so once you cure the pro process those sensors, then the final sensor is going to be the same no matter what the manufacturing process is. Why don't you draw this out for us? Sure. BJ, what's the difference between each one of these? Yeah, basically, here I'm drawing the different ways that we can make the uh, printed temperature sensors. Actually, the first one is not printed. This is spray deposition technique, uh, but all others are the different ways of printing those uh, printed sensors. And once you go down, so your manufacturing scale is going to be bigger and bigger. Like for example, here it takes like maybe like two hours to make 10 sensors to here. So we are talking about 500 foot per minute kind of speed of manufacturing the sensor. And on each square foot, so there are thousands and thousands of printed sensors. Why would you choose one over another? What, what's the criteria here? Oh, this, uh, the, mainly it, it is whether it is R&D or is the manufacturing. The, the main criteria is that one. So if people are doing a lot of R&D and try to make a better sensors in the lab scale, most, most probably they are going to go with spray coating, inkjet in printing, and the screen printing. So if it's already on the commercial stage, either they are going to go roll-to-roll -roll screen printing or roll-to-roll -roll other gravure or flex of printing. And you can print over and over again on these devices too, right, on the substrates? So you yeah, can... your substrate keeps on rolling and you keep on printing. So basically you can put sensors across an entire building in one strip? Sure, yeah, yes. So 500 feet per minute you can go with that speed. Where do you see this technology starting to play? What kind of markets? Yeah, so those kind of speed of like a very high scale of uh, manufacturing, so they are going to be useful on like industrial monitoring, and warehouse monitoring uh, to protect the inventory from uh, in the warehouses. So there you need that kind of scale of like one building. So how long is that going to be? So that, ha that has to be covered with your sensors. So that's where this uh, a high scale throughput manufacturing comes into play. What makes this different is you're not really thinking about the form factor of the technology itself. Now it's the form factor of the factory or the warehouse, what, whatever you've got there, because this will work in almost any setting, right? Yes, yes. As you scale this up, where else do you see this playing? Yeah, I think that that's, go that's going to be mainly used for uh, uh, big applications like warehouses and uh, smart buildings, um, smart cities, where you need a really big... Uh, uh, sensor arrays, so th they are going to be useful on those applications. And you can mix and match a lot of different kinds of sensors with this technology as well, right? So it's not just sure. temperature, yeah. it's also uh, pressure, it's uh, vibration, all sorts of things. Yes, yes. You you can have, so with the, the beauty about the printed sensors is you can have a different kind of pixels on your uh, sensor array that gives the, the uh, sensitivity to different kind of uh, uh, environment like temperature, moisture, or any other gases, any poisonous or any kind of toxic gases. So you can have the sensor array that has different pixels with different functionalities. Can you use it for something like detecting a potentially a fire someplace or a uh, an earthquake, natural disasters? Yeah, fire, uh, most probably carbon monoxide sensor. So that's what that's going to be. So that sensor you can make actually by using this printing techniques and that can be used for detecting the fire. Earthquake most probably that is going to be vibration sensor and that is doable with printing technology as well. So this can actually go anywhere and the the idea here is that you sensors can proliferate at a much faster speed than they can any other way right? Yes. Yeah so the, the yeah the good thing about the printed sensor is 
because of the size of the sensor. So we are using extremely, extremely thin film of each material. That means they are they have very high speed to everything. Like for example, temperature sensor. If you are talking about silicon sensor and other technologies, basically you have to heat up a big mass, thermal mass. But here you are talking about like less than one micron thick film which heats up immediately and responds to temperature immediately. So they are going to be much faster. Can printed sensors also be combined with traditional silicon sensors? Yeah, definitely, sure, we, we can do. I think that is a good idea because uh, printed sensors, they don't have, they have some drawbacks also, they have some limitations also. For example, a printed moisture sensor, yes, they are very fast, but they are not accurate, so they, they drift over time. On the other hand, the silicon-based uh, humidity sensor, they are accurate, but they are very slow. So you can integrate the, these two technologies, two kind of sensors, to get the speed from the printed sensor and accuracy from the silicon sensor. So I think combining these two is a very good idea, which gives uh, the strength of both kind of sensors. Vijay Kayasta, thanks for a great explanation.